that has to rank as the worst 45 minutes of football that I've ever seen. So, no, rather, the worst 45 minutes of football I have seen this season. Garbage. For all the hype of Arsenal and Man United, the football being played or talking class B break. I am inducting that half of football. Horrible, horrible. How the mighty have fallen. Remember how good Arsenal and United used to be back in the days of Van Nistelrooy flipping M. Cristiano, flipping Henri Vieira to this? This is trash. Complete and utter trash. But Scott McDominay, Scott McTominay, that was that was a huge G. He's been playing very well, but that G by Scott McTominay was flipping huge. And also, I was speaking to Devo as well. Aubameyang might be the most crucial most important player to his team. What Aubameyang has been doing for Arsenal has been money. What he's been doing for Arsenal has been money. I just think it's been amazing. And I think yet again, scoring a crucial goal, an amazing goal. And my goodness, thank God for VR. Because if VR did not exist, <laughs> my Lord, um, because that that was 3,000 years on site. But the second half was better. But I, I just think like, when you look at that first half of football, you have to worry about these teams. And I think... We're now on the topic of how Ace Milan have fallen from, from grace. We've got to look at United and Arsenal because I'm just looking there. The 45 minutes, the amount of times that the ball was lost, lack of creativity, lack of imagination, a lack of skill, not one moment of brilliance, not one... Basically, the only moment of brilliance was McTominay's shot, but hardly any good individual quality throughout the, the game. I think it took about 30, 40 minutes since, since there was a, a single shot to, on or off target. I mean, it's like, I'm not saying... How is, how is the, the, the stuff this bad? But I think United are in serious trouble. Pogba looks completely disinterested. And I think for Pogba, whenever he has the ball and he looks up, he's like, there's nothing there. There's there's, there's no creative run. Who am I passing to? Passing to Daniel James. Daniel James is probably United's best player, but it's flipping Daniel James, the white who's in bolts. And Rashford is just a guy, whether you want to call it low confidence, whether he's crab or a brick, Rashford, for me, he's just become completely ineffective. So you have your best player who looks disinterested. You have a team that there is not that there is no technical quality in the final third. Daniel James is not a guy with high technical brilliance or quality. Rashford has been shown this guy, he just ain't it. So for United, it's extremely problematic. It's a team void of anything sexy or, or, or interesting, and it's... It's, 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 how does that team come top four? How the hell do you put out that team top four? How do you do it? For us now, I just think, again, in the first phase, like, okay, what are these guys doing? But, but, these young guys look very good for us now. Um, Sako, the guy looks, like, he played very well against Frankfurt. And even in this game, he was actually one of Arsenal's best players. Pepe is under review. He's officially under review. I said this guy has skill, and he does have skill and natural ability. My goodness, the amount of bad decisions he, he, he made, the amount of times where it's like, you can't just dribble all the time. And if you're going to dribble, try and dribble to beat him, and you can't just do these skills around that don't really advance you forward. Every skill you do has to be with intent. So for Pepe, I'm sorry, I'm like, bro, you've got to do it a, a, a lot more in these games. Um, But I just think, you know, with Arsenal... <laughs> For Bameyang, as long as you have a Bameyang in your team, this guy can do something. The, the quality of that finish, that was, a, that, was a, that was not a finish, that was a niche. The quality of that niche was high. And I think with when you just have a Bameyang in the team, and the, the, the quick issue, why was he playing out of the wing? It is so frustrating when you see a top striker, a top finisher, spending time on the, on the wing and crossing, crossing to Torreira. That's just stupid. But for Aubameyang, I have to say this, and I've said this before, he might be one of the best natural goal scorers in the world. This guy was shifting Gs for Dortmund. He came into Premier League, he's shifting Gs. They put up his stats. Last 17 games, I think Aubameyang has 17 Gs. United have 15 Gs. Aubameyang by himself has outscored Man United in their last 17 games. That is insane. And I just think that it's... If only Arsenal just had the right support for Aubameyang... Everybody pulled in their weight. Everybody also contributed to score. Pepe actually tried to play like someone. It'd be money. And if you're Emery man, bro, who cares about who cares about age and youth? Start Sako and start Willock and then go from there. Because Pepe, maybe he needs to rest on the bench or play some cup games because all because you spent money on, on him doesn't mean anything. If he's not been effective, screw him. But yeah, man, um, for Arsenal, I still think Arsenal will, will get top four, mainly because of Obama. For United... I fear for these guys. I cannot make an argument for, for top four for these guys because I just, there is such disbelief emanating throughout this, this team. It is scary and it is, it is worrying. And there is just, 
the lack of imagination in this team is, is scary. I mean, and even before this game, they had to rely on a testy baby called Greenwood to get them the winning goal against flipping ass Tana. Sorry, man, for United, man, I don't know whether it's the poor scouting, poor player acquisition. That team, those guys are a bunch of bricks, man.